We're talking this morning with Bob Maurer, author of One Small Step Can Change Your Life. And Bob, you're now living in Spokane. What brought you to Spokane? Romance, love. I met a woman at a conference I was giving in Salt Lake City and she lived here. And I ended up following her to the city. I'd never been here before. And most of your work has been done where? At the University of California, Los Angeles School of Medicine. I was there for almost 20 years before moving here to Spokane and working for the Family Medicine Residency Program and the University of Washington here. Well, we'll talk more about your book later, but what what is it that you really like to do? What's your what's the thing that really energizes you? Whether it's your work or play or what what's your thing? Well, there's two things really. I love giving presentations. There's nothing more exciting than being in front of an audience sharing information that I hope and believe will change their lives. On a personal level, I love the theater. I love seeing plays, musicals, uh -huh. ballet. Um, I think in some ways it balances out the work I do at the medical center where I see people whose bodies or minds are struggling and on the stage you see perfection. Do you think that's true for everybody that people need to kind of unplug from the news and kind of get away for a day or two or I mean do people need to regenerate? Well, I think they do. Sometimes you can do that in large ways like vacations or going to see a two or three hour musical or a movie. Sometimes you can do it in small ways. The body works on a 90 minute cycle and there's research now suggesting if you take a three minute break every 90 to 120 minutes it re re recreates the energy that the body and particularly the brain needs. A three minute break? You think most people's bosses are gonna gonna go for that one? Well, it depends. The research on this has been published in the Harvard Business Review, and has been used in banks and accounting firms and other businesses. So they they're able to document increase in sales, increase in productivity as a result of this. So I think if bosses saw the information, they would jump at it. <laughs> do you take three minute breaks? Yes, I do. And what do you do during those three minute breaks? Sometimes I call my friend Craig or send him an email. <laughs> Sometimes I just take a walk. Sometimes I walk down the hall and tell a joke or listen to a joke from one of my colleagues. Uh, sometimes I just turn on um, music and just listen for three minutes or take a walk around the building. That's great. So let's talk about your book for a minute. Okay. So the title of your book is One Small Step Can Change Your Life. Right. And why did you write that book? Well, I, was, I work in a medical center where I see people struggling to lose weight, struggling to increase the quality of their relationships, wanting to increase their productivity and, and wealth at work. Um, and I just couldn't figure out why we were having so much trouble motivating people. I knew people were busy. I knew that their hearts were in the right place. And I have a, my major research interest is in success behavior, what allows people to succeed in jobs, health, and relationship. And I came across an ad in the newspaper uh, for Lexus, and for the umpteenth year, they won. They had first place in the J.D. Power survey for uh, automobile customer satisfaction, and so I thought there must be something about building a car that I could apply to building a life. So I went to look at how it was Lexus was able to build such high-quality cars, and that led me to the work of Dr. Ed Edward Deming, who was with the Census Bureau before World War II, very involved in quality control during the war. And after the war, literally nobody in the U.S. cared about his funny ideas about quality. But the Japanese invited him over, and small struggling firms at the time, like Toyota, embraced his ideas. And one of the ideas they, they embraced the most powerfully was a concept called Kaizen, which they ironically adapted from our work, but it means making very, very small steps when you want to accomplish large goals. And that's what led me to Kaizen, was that ad in the newspaper. <laughs> Hey, you never know what you're going to find in the newspaper. Exactly. So, the concept of Kaizen, do you know what, uh, you must know what Kaizen means. It, it, it's yes. A, Zen is Japanese for good, and Kai is Japanese for change. So it means good change. And do you think it's more difficult at this time, at this point in time, for people to change than it was 20, 30, 40 years ago? Or is, has it always been difficult or easy to change? I think it's always been difficult. Mark Twain wrote about how difficult change was, so I know it goes back at least a hundred years. And 
probably thousands when you look at the things people have struggled with from time immemorial. So is that because we're creatures of habit? We just, our brains are wired to kind of see things the same. An example is I went into my buddy's garage and he has an orange 240Z. And he had two of them in his garage. It's a big garage. And I didn't notice that he had two. I, all I saw was one. And then uh, my other friend showed up and he said, hey, you got two 240Zs. And then it struck me. I thought, I, I'm not really, I'm seeing what my mind maybe is accustomed to seeing. And, and so kind of allowing in new information that, you know, even in fairly relaxed settings like a garage can be uh, difficult. Yes, there's that saying we grow up with, seeing is believing, but the research suggests that your example is a perfect illustration of it, is believing is seeing. We see what we're already believing or looking for. Right. So you're not used to walking into a garage and seeing two exactly same cars in the garage, and so you only saw what you were looking for. Right. So unfortunately that filters into our political process where people watch MSNBC or they watch Fox and they, they hear the news that they expect to hear rather than anything that's going to challenge them or question their beliefs. And any advice for the young people today that are, you know, in their teens, 20s, 30s, that are trying to make changes? Anything that you'd like them to hear? In terms of personal change? Yeah. Well, to realize that there's two strategies for change. The one that we're all familiar with is innovation, which we define as taking large, huge steps to accomplish uh, big goals. And of course, innovation is good. And that's the kind of thing particularly young people think of. They want a relationship by the end of the month. They want to get thin by the end of the week. They want to get the grades now. They want a job immediately. So thinking in terms of big steps is, is a useful process. Yeah. But it's only one of two, and that is to consider that the small incremental steps have an equal if not greater chance of getting them to these big dreams as do the big steps. And sometimes in our haste to get to the big steps, uh -huh. we end up having big falls. And sometimes young folks haven't had those falls yet yeah. and have a, a greater faith in the big leaps than the, than the big leaps deserve. When people, wa I mean, you, you said you're a fan of theater, and it seems like in movies and theater, people can go through rapid transformation. Yes. And and does that? I, I think we're attracted to that because we we see things change, but in real life, um, you know, it seems like things can change quickly um, in a bad direction. <laughs> the fall you were talking about, right. but you know, can they change just as quickly in a in a good a positive direction for people? Do you see well, that happen? I don't see it happen so much as it looks like it's happening. You see Robin Williams for the first time on TV or any other star uh, or an Olympic athlete, and you think, my God, if I had their gifts, their talents, I'd have that kind of success. <coughs> Excuse me. But what we don't realize is the decade or more that most of them spent laboring in complete obscurity before that day when we saw them on television. So because of the movies or because of television, we tend to have an unrealistic expectation of how many years, decades sometimes, of hard work and effort it takes and persistence before that result of fame and fortune that we're seeing on television. 